Good evening and welcome to the Municipality of Monroeville's uh, Citizens Night and Agenda Setting Meeting for February 7th, 2019. It is approximately 7.05 p.m. If you'd please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All of council is in attendance other than Mr. Johns this evening. Nice. We're going to start the meeting with Citizens Night. Uh, this, the floor is open for any citizen who would like to address council on any municipal item. We ask to, uh, if you please stick to a five minute uh, time limit to uh, keep the meeting moving at an efficient pace. So if uh, anyone has signed in, now would be your time to Approach council. <laughs> oh, uh, help me. Hi, Nicole. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks. Two things for you. Oh. Madam Director. <laughs> you state your Hello. name for the record. I am Nicole Henline, um, Monroeville resident and director of the library. <laughs> and um, tonight I bring you two thick packets of paper. Um, I wanted to just stop in, thank you for your continued support, um, and share with you some of the things that we um, are up to. Um, one of them is the new board report that the board will be getting every month, and we trialed it in December, so it actually gives you year-end numbers. Um, so I invite you to, to peruse that when you can, try to make it more readable than just a plain word document. Um, it's a little more exciting. It has some pictures of the different events that we had. Um, three of the pictures, which I believe Joe has, um, are from the very successful ball drop on New Year's Eve day. Um, at noon, there was a ball drop for families, and we had about 325 people in attendance. And everyone said they had a wonderful time, everyone seemed happy, and those faces in those pictures are amazing. Um, the paper came and took those pictures, so. That's somebody's agenda. Yeah. Um, we also, coming up, um, you've heard before of our interfaith ministerium, or you've heard of the interfaith ministerium, but you've heard of the um, interfaith panels. Every, we're starting to do them every other month. It was a little more, um, it was less regular before, but they have caught on in popularity. So every other month, the faith leaders from Monroeville will be meeting to discuss different topics and um, open themselves up to questions from the, the public. And the one coming up this month is on Wednesday, February 13th. The interfaith panel is called Thou Shalt, Sources of Religious Authority. Um, panelists include representatives from the Buddhist, Catholic, Hindu, Jewish, Muslim, Protestant, um, <coughs> Sikh, and Unitarian Universalist faith communities. So please consider joining us. Um, it's always a wonderful opportunity to learn something new um, about your neighbors. And we also have, I wanted to tell you about a new type of story time that our head of children's services, uh, Hope Benson, is offering. It is a sensory story time for um, story times that aren't quite right for all kids. Um, some kids who have sensory um, issues can come to this story time and, ha and have the same kind of experience on a level that they can appreciate. Um, and it has been, um, it's just started to pick up and we're having, um, we had a wonderful review from a family the other day um, who had a wonderful time. So we're hoping um, more people who can use this type of service will come. Siblings are welcome. And so that, the next one will be the beginning of March. It's the first Tuesday of each month at 530. Um, and the children's room is also doing something we're very proud of called Pay It Forward Week each month. They're having a service project that children can participate in. Um, they can support a local initiative or charity in a way that's appropriate for younger children to understand. 
So in February, they're making colorful cards for a local child who's fighting cancer. Um, and it's a drop-in. Anytime um, February 11th through 15th, when you bring your child or grandchild into the library, they can make a card. Um, so those are just a few. As you know, we have lots of events um, that you can peruse in the newsletter. Um, and, oh, we're starting Adult Craft Night again. It was always very popular, but it was difficult um, to fit people in the rooms that we had. So it's going to be in the program room, which is larger than the Maker Lab. Um, and it's starting March 12th. Um, for those who like to craft, it should be much fun. Um, it's a canvas with a tree, and the leaves are made of buttons, and it's kind of nice and methodical to sit there and... I got to sit there and put a few buttons on myself, so it's, it's a little, uh, it's kind of zen. It worked out well. Um, so I just wanted to share that information with you, and thank you so much for your continued support. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, there's information. It just came out today. Uh, the governor's uh, budget for education, it includes increases for education which for the 10th year in a row do not include increases for libraries. Does um, not, did you say? Does not, does not. Okay. which are the only educational institutions <coughs> that touch everyone from babies to senior citizens. So um, for our council people and Mr. Mayor, uh, the manager, and also um, residents who are watching, please contact your local Congress people um, and let them know that the libraries should be part of that increase. Um, we are very fortunate, thanks to you and thanks to the county, that we're still able to offer excellent services and programs. Not all libraries can say that. Um, they depend on the state even more than we do. So if you have a moment, please do um, reach out. And there should be more information on our Facebook page very soon. So. Great. Thank, Thank you. Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, Thank you, on. Nicole. <coughs> hold on one second, Nicole, too. Um, on the, do you want to expand a little on the 12-3 meeting we were at it, it, uh, with the ACLA board a little bit in terms of how, where that's going? You know what? Which one? I'll just do it. You do it. I'll, okay. I'll do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it right now, Nicole. I'm sorry. We didn't discuss it before. If you notice in the, in the report in here, on the beginning of December, uh, there was a, a meeting with the so. Allegheny County, uh, the Act with folks and yeah, board, Allegheny Allegheny Library, Library Association. Association board, and coupled also with representatives from the regional asset district uh, from that. That has grown into recently um, another outreach from that uh, mm -hmm. that'll expand. Uh, we just, I just accepted an invitation to them to expand conversations with other elected officials in a larger group to look towards the RAD funding and increase the RAD funding possibilities and works with the, with the Library Association mm -hmm. as well. Um, I'm on it, my uh, young lady from PNC is on it, um, and we're trying to reach out to some other elected mm -hmm. officials. We asked them to, to, to discuss that as well. And there were only, two in, in the 46 <coughs> lives, there were only Excuse two me. municipalities whose liaisons were invited to participate, and Eric was one of those. And that's so. to, to that point, Greg, <laughs> the reason we to, to do that too is, is to bring that up as, as it circles back in. One of the requests we've had is, is to work to increase that funding to help increase what we you know decrease the burden on all of us because uh, that's to, also to, well, I'm, didn't expand that with you guys before I apologize for not getting it to you but and the state money um, since it hasn't increased in 10 years it doesn't increase when you increase our budget as the county money does but if they start funding it again then it will um, increase when your um, contributions increase so something for the future. Right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll leave the floor open. <clears throat> Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Jeanette Beagle, and I am a resident of Monroeville. I am here tonight to invite council, our mayor, anybody else in the municipality that would like to attend. The students at University Park Elementary on Wednesday, February 27th, are putting together a science exhibition. We have 55 students that signed up to participate, so from volcanoes to solar systems to electricity. Oh, it's a, a science <laughs> fair, and these are kids that are in grades yeah. K through four. 
Sorry, what time does it start? It starts at 6.30. It'll be at University Park Elementary in the all-purpose room, but it's going to actually encompass the whole lower floor of the school because it's also our STEAM It Up night. So we usually do a STEAM event, which is the science, technology, that whole aspect. The Monroeville Public Library is going to be there with some STEAM activities. We also have the Gateway High School Quasics Robotics Club. From my understanding, they will be bringing one of the robots that they have designed with them for the kids to do. It's a family event, so peruse, see what the wonderful students have put together, and um, enjoy a good night of steam. So, and I will leave this with you guys. Yeah, great. Oh, great. Like. Yeah, we can put that up on the. Can we put that up on the website, Tim? That mm -hmm. she has a flyer. We can put this on the website. Oh, thank you. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else like to address council? Now would be your time. Hi, my name is David Mintz. Um, actually, I'd like to first commend uh, our library after the, the report that Nicole gave that uh, the, the great events and programs that are there I attend with my family and I just wanted to add that since uh, she gave her report today and uh, I think the Monroe Library is great so I just wanted to add that in. Um, I, um, I came here tonight um, but the main thing I wanted to talk about was um, everybody's aware in Monroe that the jug handle that was added I don't know how many years ago at Gateway uh, Campus Boulevard and Haymaker and Moss I had that area that you know, wasn't always there but it was, a it was added a certain number of years ago. Um, I wanted to come here uh, to talk about just basically the fact that I even personally am aware of three different uh, recent events at that area that kind of um, have caused alarm for me so that maybe we could do something. Um, there are signs there to tell people that it's don't enter on the place where you're supposed to exit, obviously, to either go south onto 48 or across to the Gateway Campus to the library and to the schools and everything. But um, I'm hoping we can do something more because um, the first event, which was sometime this winter, uh, my mother was going the proper way on it and a pizza delivery car was coming right at her and she had to <laughs> avoid that. So that was a little scary. Um, and then within the last week, I personally have witnessed um, first a car that was going north on Haymaker at the light there and turned right into it. Mm -hmm. And then about a week later, I was actually coming home after watching the Super Bowl somewhere, and I was coming home, and I was in the, uh, I was headed south to go on to Haymaker. I was at the intersection at the red light, and there was a car to my left in the left of the two left turn lanes with its left turn signal on and started to go, to turn left. And I was honking at them to try to get them to stop, but they turned left into it. Um, now, I've looked at it, and there are signs there that say do not enter, exit only. But, I mean, just the fact that I personally have seen to, and my mother's told me about a third, makes me think that uh, I, I needed to come here to at least to make uh, more people aware that maybe there's something else. I don't know who's in charge of that area, uh, flashing lights, or maybe even signage. I'm thinking part of it, probably not the pizza guy probably, but uh, the other two may have been people that are not familiar with the area who were trying to get to the hospital and just thought, well, maybe that's where you turn. Because I notice if you're coming north on Haymaker, it says all turns go this way, but then the writing for where your going is real small. Maybe they think that's the turn for the hospital because they've missed the other one. Um, I don't know if we need better signs for we don't bigger do signs. The signs for there, though, do we? It's isn't county. that the? Uh, is that the county? Isn't that the county? County and state. Because I wanted to have the H put more centered over to the left. You know, so it's it's kind of between the two left turns. Oh, oh, with your coming. South. I wanted okay. it just. Like, just put it on that one, you uh -huh. know, like on the far left, so that everybody's so at everybody least in that lane. everybody knows that they should go down and not turn there. Yes, uh, and, yeah, and kind of no, they want it right yeah. where they have it, and, you know, yes. they did, would not change yeah. it. Well, David, just so you know, I mean, we're very well aware of that intersection and, that, and the poor design of it, and we've had okay. numerous. Uh, I didn't know. Yeah, we have yeah. numerous okay. meetings about this, very active meetings within the past, uh, actually, week even. Oh, really? Regarding this. So, okay, okay. Um, I, I mean, have other people been calling about it, or...? or? I mean, we've you've just been aware. We've been really aware. We know. Yeah, we've okay, been, okay. Yeah. But Monroe, but we've really well, I've really seen some of what you've seen. Yeah, like, I mean, I like thought if I didn't come here, I didn't know yeah. any of that. Yeah, but gate, if, gateways, like, yeah. Gateway has a very very much an interest. Uh, uh, certainly, school buses, Fort, Fort's right. Hospital has a major right. interest in, in fixing that entrance and fixing yeah. that intersection. 
and we've been uh, dealing with the state and the county. So um, it all comes down to the proper design, and then uh, the most important thing is how to Money. pay for it. Okay. As uh, to redesign an intersection is very sure. expensive, but there are a lot of people working on this. But yes, okay. absolutely, is something that we well, we want to see. Through. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad, and I didn't know that you know was anybody was really talking about it. Though. I think they I've plan on doing some changes over there. Freaky. You need to look at Mr. Hugus and. Uh, Paul's well aware of these changes and potential changes as well. Okay. But as soon as we know more about it, we'll certainly... Uh, yeah, we'll put it out. We'll put it out. I mean, that would be great because, you know, unfortunately, just in my experience in life, um, how many times have we seen where a stop sign's been put up or something's been done after, let's face it, I mean, unfortunately, a fatal accident. And then something's done. I was just hoping, not knowing if that's ever happened at that intersection, to get something done before, you know, that. Yeah, they track, they definitely track the, uh, the number of accidents there, and yeah. that's part of the, the pitch to the state yeah. as far as trying to get this done. Okay. David, I'll give you my official answer. Okay. PennDOT has jurisdiction over traffic signals in the Commonwealth. When I say the, <clears throat> the intersection, signals and signs, they give the municipality a permit, this is how it's supposed to be done. So we don't really have any jurisdiction that it's all right. PennDOT. Regardless if it's a county, state, local, private, anything. So if I wanted to do any more, in addition to what you're doing, what would a Give citizen Penn do? Give PennDOT a buzz. Call PennDOT. <laughs> call PennDOT and say, hey, I live in And Minnesota. they're aware of the situation, too. And they are. We okay. get constant complaints. Oh. Well, it wouldn't hurt to call. Sure. I mean, I can It never that. hurts to call. It can't hurt to call your elected officials, Brewster's office, and Marcos. Et okay. Exactly. So but, they, they, but they, too, are aware they're of aware, it. They're aware, but they're I can add to it. They're, they're working on this as okay. well. Okay. This has um, been no, something that's been in discussion for years. Yes. Yeah, it's just alarming how many I know. I've personally seen. So yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, real quick, I know I probably use up my five minutes. Real quick, you know, I can't come up without just mention just to, as, as a question. Um, if uh, you know, as my usual, we've been talking about for years. Has there been any uh, work or progress uh, on the subject of updating our our um, gas drilling ordinance for Monroeville? Has there been any work on that lately? Or are we still waiting? I think the last time I asked you, you still said you were waiting for certain court cases to be decided in Pennsylvania. Just what's the progress on that? We're still just. In a holding pattern. So none of those cases have been decided that you were waiting for, or uh... I think what's happened. I, I think the request came from, and I'm not. It came from uh, some people that have come up uh -huh. along with you to voice their interest in that matter, mm -hmm. and one of the cases has been decided. Another one is between the Commonwealth Court and the Supreme Court. Okay. Um, but the request was initiated on that side based on let's see what these cases say when they're finally adjudicated. So one of them is still making its way through. Okay, okay just to make you uh, just aware, if in case anybody wants to look into it, I know Murraysville is deep into this subject as well with their council. Uh, I, I, I don't know all the details, but I think their, their next zoning uh, board meeting is like part two of this subject. They've been, people have been dealing with trying to work on their zoning ordinance in Murraysville because it's a, it's a subject there as well as we know as, you know, Everybody knows Murraysville is the first place where there was a, I think a gas well in Pennsylvania. But so it's it's a current thing that going on there too. So we're not alone, as you know. They're actually they, the ordinance they adopted is being challenged. Is actually what's happening. The okay. group of citizens are challenging the ordinance that they adopted two years ago, maybe. Okay. All right. Well, we'll hopefully keep up to date on what's going on there. And we certainly do have yeah. protections in place currently. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I know. But I'm just hoping to, you know, do more. spruce you those would. up. Or right. yeah. Yeah. So okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, David. You. If anyone else would like to address council, I'll leave the floor open. Seeing none, we're going to close that part of the meeting, and we're going to move over to our uh, agenda setting meeting. Council, we have an executive session announcement that <coughs> council conducted an executive session for personnel and litigation reasons prior to tonight's Citizens' Night. Beginning at 6.30 p.m. until 7 p.m., council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the February 12th council meeting. Moving to our approval of our minutes. Council, in front of you are the minutes for the Citizens' Night meeting of January 3rd, 2019, the Council Work Session of January 3rd, 2019, and the regular Council meeting of January 8th, 2019. Any uh, questions, comments, additions, corrections? Council? No, sir. No, sir. Seeing none, we'll move over to our <coughs> tax collections. Council, any questions or comments on the reports? No, sir. List of bills and budget transfers. Mrs. Gatos, I'll start with you. Do you have anything this evening? Nothing this evening, sir. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Coach? No, sir. Mr. Harvey? Just one. On page seven of the list of bills, there was four purchases <coughs> of 1,000 tons of salt, and I was wondering why the prices were so different. 
it went from $8,300 to 16324 and they're all for 1,000 tons of salt. I was just curious. There was a, uh, there was a reduction in the, uh, they have a clause in there, uh, an escalator clause or a de-escalator clause. If the price of fuel goes down or up, they can adjust that. And but I mean, from 8,000 to 16,000? Yeah, that, that's... That's a lot. Extreme. Twice as much? <laughs> We're hoping it's a typo. <laughs> it was like 8 to 6, that would make sense. It could be just the description that's in there because I'm looking at it. It's all on the same purchase order, but the document numbers would be different invoice numbers. Yeah. So we had this year. I think what Josie said is correct. We had this a year or two ago that most likely, but I will get back to council and let them know about this. Most likely the the amount, the 1,000 ton. I was just going to say, is it possible that, we, that it should be 2,000 tons or something? Yeah, that because I, we had this on another one, Josie, if yeah. you remember, because I went to Darlene a couple times about it <coughs> through the years. And, uh, and because it's on one purchase order, it, and you can't change it with Munis, it's 1,000 ton. But those, those tonnage, the amount, the weight is most likely different. But I'll clarify that with you. Okay. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Mr. Arsenko. Ron did it. We're good. Okay, Mr. Duncan. I have nothing. Mr. Wilson. No, thank you. Payroll report, council, any questions? Josie. I have something. Josie has a comment on oh, the yellow. Uh, I do have something this okay. time. The floor is yours. Um, if you look on the, um, oh, I don't know where it's at now, health care. Yep, it's uh, health monthly health care payments. It's after uh, the vendor invoice list um, if you there's a duplicate line item on there that I I didn't review this before it went to print just because things are crazy trying to close out everything and you know w2s and so forth um, and so the amount total amount says 385 but the total the actual totals 383303 because um, of that duplicate line for the UPMC HRA. Um, I will, by next um, meeting, I will give you corrected copies of this so you can just replace it. Very good. Questions, Council? Nope. Done. No. Okay. I'm good. Anything else, Ms. Brock? <coughs> Anything else? No, nothing. Okay. Payroll report, <coughs> Council. Yeah. Any questions, comments about yeah. payroll? No. Okay, we're going to move over to our consent agenda. Uh, two items of new business regarding Sandy Hill development. Mr. Little. Okay, we have uh, Sandy Hill development applicant is requesting a site plan approval to construct 133 single family residential homes and associated site amenities. The applicant also requests a waiver for the construction of a cul de sac that will exceed the maximum permissible length of 800 feet. The property is located at 3892 Logan's Ferry Road, otherwise known as Maple Crest Golf Course, in the R2 One Family Residential Zoning District. Uh, this has come back to council. It did not go to the Planning Commission, and I believe it's due to, I'm sure council remembers, this was back, this was here last month, and I believe you just have a, um, an adjustment, a modification right. with respect to the uh, road. The private road, Maple Crest Lane. Uh, good evening, Ed Moore with Scheffler and Company again. Uh, yeah, we just have a, a small revision to the plans. Uh, unfortunately, as I guess you remember, there was an issue with the access of uh, how Maple Crest Lane was used and the access of the back property for those residents. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't come to an agreement with some of the residents that live back on Maple Crest Lane, so uh, we've revised the plan accordingly. This is the this is the old plan which shows our loop road and what we had proposed is an improvement of Maple Crest Lane up to our property line and then Maple Crest Lane would continue as existing. Under this plan we abandon a portion of Maple Crest Lane in this area. Um, so since we couldn't agree on the access of Maple Crest Lane we've come to this new plan which you have in front of you and in essence it leaves Maple Crest Lane all intact as it is today uninterrupted. We still have our loop road which will cross over Maple Crest Lane. 
There'll be two stop signs on either side of Maple Crest Lane to control traffic. But uh, in essence, we've kept Maple Crest Lane uninterrupted from Logan's Ferry all the way back through the other residents. So we hope we, uh, we have accomplished the, uh, the idea of and if, and if you could slide that over oh, this way a little bit. They're not getting any improvement at all because yeah, they can't agree. Right. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, we can't come to an agreement right. uh, on, on getting... So you guys were willing to put out some extra money to do some improvements, but you couldn't get enough residents to agree with you, so you had correct. to abandon the idea. That is all correct. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct, yeah. So you will now have a basically four-way intersection. That is correct, yes, yes. With no improvement at all to... None. Our, our, you're correct. Our loop road will be fully improved, yeah. our proposed road, but this road will remain as it is. It's a shame. And, and one less lot also? Uh, no, actually the lots are the same as okay. of right now. There's still 133. We adjusted the grading in these areas to make all that work. We still left a 50-foot potential right-of-way here if in the future that road does continue through. You can improve that to township standards as well. So okay. it's still possible. It's just uh, at this time, you know, unfortunately we couldn't come to an agreement. Right. So that's council. Any, okay. uh, any other no, questions? No other questions. No, no, we beat that up last time. Yeah, we sure did beat it up last time. Okay, so that is uh, Mr. Little. This is for this would cover both. Uh, that that is just for the uh, site plan approval. Um, the the second one is for the uh, subdivision applicants requesting a preliminary and final subdivision approval tax parcel seventeen forty one R one forty nine. Applicant proposes to subdivide the existing parcel into 133 new single-family residential lots and eight parcels used for open space and stormwater detention. The property is located at 3892 Logan's Ferry Road in the R2 one-family residential zoning district. We didn't have any further issues with any stormwater or anything last from last time, did we? I know we went through so much stuff last time. Yeah, that's pretty intense. We're all good? We're good. We're good. Okay. Council? Any questions, Good. comments? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thanks for your time. We'll see you on Tuesday. All right, we'll see you next week. Great. Mm -hmm. Council, moving over to our motions. We have one motion. Mr. Little, please. Yeah, we have a motion to approve a business membership with the Turtle Creek Watershed Association in the amount of $50. And That's pretty cheap. Okay. We have received this in the past. Uh, I've never given it to Council for approval, but I think it's something that uh, would be a... Uh, uh, for council to, uh, for the municipality be a member of yeah i'm good i'm good mm -hmm. okay very good and moving to our resolutions we have three this evening mr little please yeah resolution adopting the number one cochran automotive sewage planning module any questions on that any nope. paul you want to add anything yeah i was going to suggest i'll pass this off to paul wielden mr wielden uh, no issues. We've reviewed it. DEP's reviewed it. Alcasan, Allegheny Health Department. Uh, it's just ready to be signed off. Thank I'm you. I'm good. Council, any questions? Let's go. And this is this is for the the new building on uh, next to the collision center. Next to the collision center. Great. Mr. Little. Okay, number two, a resolution authorizing the display of various event banners at the corner of the intersection of States Route 22 and 48 within a right-of-way of property belonging to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. This is the annual resolution that we pass uh, each year for those banners that we know that are going to be up uh, in 2000, in the coming year, which is 2019. On the resolution, there is there are two banners. Uh, one for the uh, North American Martyrs Festival and one for the um, St. Um, Bernadette. Uh, we know that there may, we don't, well, we don't know if there's going to be just one festival, so we put both of them on there just to cover all bases in case both churches have a festival. Good. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay, number three is a resolution authorizing the execution of a declaration of and grant easement to the municipality of Moreauville over, under, and through certain property owned by Terra Capital Associates for the purpose of ingress and egress across said property to facilitate the installation of electrical utility lines for technology drive. This has been a long time coming. And this is to get elect electricity to the, the lights, the, the uh, street lights that are up at Tech One Park. So um, incrementally, we're making some progress there. Bob, can you have anything you want to add to that? I mean, is there any legal issues that 
No, I, I, can do. no <laughs> I've reviewed the ordinance. This is consistent with the uh, memorandum of understanding that was executed a couple of years ago. Everybody seems to be willing to move forward now, so it looks as if we're finally going to get to this point. So everything's in order. Okay. And for everybody listening, this is the property behind the post office, the Tech One Park. Um, this is a very positive thing for the community, so um, hoping to see this get approved on Tuesday. Mr. Mayor, one more question, and Bob, but we're not going to be stuck redoing his electric, or is that going to include their electric? No, no, this does not include his electric. The, the only purpose... That was an issue. Yeah, the only purpose of this from our standpoint is to get uh, electricity to the street to lights. One. Now, at the same time, that line will be there, so he can tap off of that line, but that's the developer's issue. That's the owner's issue. Right. Line. No, that's, I just wanted that, that on the record. Right. Now, whose responsibility is it uh, to pay for this? I believe there's funding being provided um, by the, by the through the uh, Allegheny County Redevelopment Authority. I think correct. it's actually a, a state grant. Okay. It is. We're not paying for it. No. no. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Council? Nope. Okay, this, uh, this evening we have uh, one ordinance. Mr. Ratcher. This is an ordinance of the Municipality of Monroeville repealing ordinance number 2541 and adopting new comprehensive stormwater management provisions for the Municipality of Monroeville pursuant to the Stormwater Management Act 32 Pennsylvania Statute section 680.1. I believe this was put on the table last time? Yes, we tabled <coughs> it last month just because we weren't done reviewing it. We're still reviewing it. It's just a, it's a large document. Continue to table it then? Uh, we'll let you know too, to be quite honest with you. Thank you. Okay. Just, yes. Keep Thank us posted. <clears throat> Moving over to our reports of municipal staff. Mr. Ratcher. No other, no other comments. Thanks. This evening. Mr. Little, you have a couple. Uh, yeah, the first one is a uh, proposal from uh, Farringer, McCarty, and Gray, uh, landscape architects and civil engineers that are here in Monroeville. Uh, and this is a proposal for engineering work uh, for the new uh, stormwater management uh, building that is going to be um, constructed uh, down at the public works facility. Uh, we um, had a tour down there or, or walked the property on, on one of the best locations that possibly this building would go. I mean, that's not uh, set in stone, though. Um, however, if council can uh, look at this, and obviously the, uh, the last page has the total design, development, construction drawings of $36,900. I've talked with Mr. Hugus about it and, and uh, Mr. Wilden, and, and from our combined experience, we believe this is a fair price uh, for uh, what um, Farringer, McCarty, and Gray is going to be doing, and we're estimating this is going to take at least a year to get the approval process and the stormwater uh, drainage that is supposed to be put in, put in down there. Um, so I would recommend the council to put this as a motion for Tuesday to, uh, to approve this so we can get uh, moving on it. Agreed. Uh -huh. Council, any questions? Next. No, I like it's a mineral-based company as well. That's an added bonus for yeah. everyone, I think. So. Very good. Okay, item number two. Uh, as a reminder, summer employees, college students, applications are due April the 22nd. So let's get them in here uh, because we have a, we've had a lot of success with uh, having college students working here in the municipal building and also down at Public Works uh, for the majority. We have quite a few, a lot of spots for summer help. So everybody, please. Get your applications in. Oh, okay. We're yeah, applications are on, on the website. Perfect. Okay. Um, okay, uh, we are going to be having, uh, again, as we do periodically, a recycling event at the Public Works uh, facility uh, this Saturday, February the 9th. It, it is beneficial to go online. We have a link on our website to go online and register for that <coughs> event. It's 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, and uh, yeah, Joe has the uh, on the monitor on what time it is. Okay. Very good. Okay, uh, an item number four. Um, PennDOT is going to begin a roadway work on Route 22 from the Turnpike 
uh, interchange uh, to the county line, Murraysville. This project is going to be taking over a year. It's going to, they're going to be letting for contracts in March, and they're scheduled, and I emphasize the word scheduled, to begin April the 15th. They're not going to be totally complete uh, until June of 2020. Uh, this is both east and west, and they're going to be replacing uh, traffic lights also. So this is a, a much-needed project in the community uh, because Route 22, um, going both ways, mm -hmm. uh, needs some work done on it. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out. As an <coughs> that won't start at the four-way, right? It will start at the entrance I, or exit of the turnpike? I where, where exactly does that start? No, that, it, it does not include 22 it and 48. It, starts it doesn't at the, start right there? It starts there. at the turnpike access. Okay. okay. I was hoping that it was going to do all no. those lights right there. Okay. And it ends going West westward. Morland. Yeah, the West Westmoreland County line. No, I'm sorry. Uh, East. Going westward, coming in, will it stop at the turnpike exit coming on to 22? It will stop at the turnpike on-ramp. But the off-ramp coming that way? Mm, I'm not quite sure the limits at that in that direction. And that will run all the way past where the Bella Luna is? Yes. To that light right there yes. where the Wendy's is on the corner? Mm -hmm. Correct. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Mr. Little. Okay, and number five, uh, once again, we have received the uh, GFOA, Government Finance Officers Asso Association Certificate of Ach Achievement in Financial Reporting, and I commend Josie for that. Job, and Josie Josie and all the Thank finance you. staff. Yay, um, I didn't do it alone. Um, <laughs> there's only a few select, and I say this every year, there's only a handful of municipalities in, in Allegheny County and in southwestern Pennsylvania that receive this award, and it's uh, there's a lot of statistics uh, that are uh, in the CAFR, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, <coughs> on the website. Um, and it, it, if you want to know about any of the finances in the municipality, all you have to do is go on the website and go to the CAFR, Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. And it can be confusing, there's no question about it. But in the back, there's just a, a plethora of statistics that, um, like I said, uh, there's not too many municipalities in, in, you know, in southwestern Pennsylvania that uh, receive this award. So my hat's off to Josie and her staff. And lastly, our council has um, received a new copy of the Home Rule Charter at their stations. It's on the website, and all the department heads and other committees <laughs> and commissions will be getting their copy. Uh, that's been a uh, two and a half, three, well, actually a... Uh, Two-year, three-year project. Uh, so that's that is complete. We just got that from the printer the other day. And also my condolences to the Ramsey family. Uh, Clarence Ramsey, former council member, uh, passing away. And that concludes my report. Mr. Hugus. Yes, sir. Councilman Johns had asked me to uh, prepare a ordinance for a portion of um, East Patty Lane for no parking. Um, typically, Tim likes to have council give him direction to. Uh, advertise for the ordinance for the March meeting. That is what this is for. Okay. So we'll consider that on Tuesday. Yeah. Very good. So Tim will get that on there mm -hmm. yeah. for Tuesday. Excellent. I have Josie nothing else. Very good. No. We'll move over to our reports of council people, and, and Tim touched on this briefly, and, uh, and I would like to note this, that uh, we did have a former councilman who uh, <coughs> passed away recently. Uh, Clarence Ramsey, uh, councilman for, for years here. Actually, when I first uh, got elected, uh, I served with Clarence. Um, he volunteered many years at Number 6 Fire Hall, served as the assistant chief, and uh, many elected uh, positions within the fire department. And uh, he will be missed by his friends and family. And uh, so we'll start up our, uh, our uh, council reports at this time. Uh, Tom. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I'd like to wish my wife, Rosanna, happy birthday today. Happy birthday, Rosanna. Yay. And uh, my sympathies go out to the Clarence Ramsey family. Uh, he's done uh, some really good work in uh, the Ward 7, also with the fire department and serving on uh, the uh, municipal council. Uh, my uh, heart goes out to Corey, to uh, his brother, and to uh, Carolyn and uh, 
I'm sure he'll be missed. Thank you. Uh, my next uh, piece of business is, uh, Mr. Serafini, you noticed uh, your chair is empty tonight. I hope you're feeling better. Mr. Serafini had a need done. And our police department had a, a major uh, drug bust today. And uh, I'd like to congratulate our police department because uh, along with the FBI, they've been uh, targeting, uh, I guess, this issue with uh, or this uh, residence. And good job, guys. Okay, uh, my, uh, I have just been re uh, recently appointed to the seniors council. I don't know why, because I'm not old enough to belong there yet. <laughs> it's only to get you in there. However, <clears throat> uh, they're going to have a super social Friday on the fourth Friday of each month from 11.30 to 1. It's just for $4. Enjoy homemade soups by the Splendid Spoonful with a little socialization. Uh, soup last, the last Friday of each month served with Italian bread. It's a perfect opportunity to meet up with old friends and make new ones. Uh, served from 11.30 to 12. Eat in or take out, Friday, February 22nd, loaded baked potato soup. Um, with the work, soup features large, large cups potato. of potatoes, cured ham, onion, celery, carrots blended together, and a sharp cheddar cheese base, 12 ounce bowl, $4 per person. Tickets must be purchased in advance. Deadline <coughs> for the tickets, February 15th. We have a takeout fundraiser. It says, why cook when you can't? Take when you can take out Tuesdays. Starting in March 2019, enjoy a home cooked dinner each month prepared by the staff and volunteers. Meals hot and ready to serve. Takeout Tuesday will be held the third Tuesday of each month. Menu will be posted and tickets will go on sale a month prior to the date uh, deadline day. Then we have a, a fund this fundraiser is open to anyone. You do not need to be a member of the center to purchase the meal. Spread the news and help raise money for the great community asset. Begins March 2019, Tuesday, March 19th. Pick up your orders between 4 and 5.30. Order must be placed in advance. Ticket deadline, March 12. Tickets are not refundable, $8 per meal. The March menu will be homemade meatloaf with gravy, served with mashed potatoes, green beans, and a dinner roll. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Mr. Duncan. Also, my condolences to the Ramsey family. I, I got to, um, I had the honor of serving up here with him for a couple years on my first term. And that's all I have. Mr. Arsenko. Yes, same with the Ramsey family. My condolences. And like a lot of us here, I served with uh, Clarence quite a few years. And condolences. He was, he was a good man. He represented Ward 7 very well. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Mr. Harvey. Um, I, like everybody else, my condolences to the Ramsey family. He and Clarence joined the fire service close to the same time. I've known his son since he's been involved. And as far as the fire department and emergency services go, we were always very close friends. I wanted to congratulate Josie and the rest of the finance staff on the award that they uh, earned. And uh, I think that is a very big deal. And a lot of times looked over, but they, they did a lot of work to earn that, and my congratulations. <clears throat> Last but not least, uh, next week at the regular council meeting, you all have the opportunity to see the winning artwork for the new MS4 division and meet the student that designed it. I encourage you to watch. I, uh, I think it'll be kind of neat for you to see that. And uh, thank all the students that, that entered that contest. Great. Thank you. Mr. Poach. Yeah, echo a couple of other things. I too served with uh, with Clarence in the fire service for a number of years. Uh, to do that as well, we certainly will be missed by them uh, as well. And also congratulations to, to Josie's team. I was really pleased to see that in our, in our packet this past week. Well done in that. And uh, happy Valentine's Day to my wife, as it comes up too. Oh, you're a good boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Poach. I forgot. Right. <laughs> Everybody else. He's a good boy. He's killed. That's a, you're good. <laughs> I forgot to say Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Gentlemen, Oops. you have another crack at it, it on never, Tuesday. You, you, have, to, of you, guys, you have Tuesday so. Tim, voice. Tim, did you put that on the agenda? Yeah, for, yeah. for the so voice on Tuesday, Tim. That's right. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm going to I'm going to start out by congratulating Mr. Arsenko for being oh, yeah. uh, elected oh, the president to the Allegheny Brown County Burrs Association. Correct. Um, there was an event on Saturday night, and uh, we, it was very well attended, and we are very pleased. Um, for Monroeville and for Mr. Sinko and the work that he will continue to do and it's always beneficial to our town so I thank you Mr. Sinko for putting your time in and I think you have a picture you're gonna put up on a monitor for I do actually have one of on my oh, that, I'm, that, 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 not I'm gonna that. save that for Tuesday <laughs> maybe um, I understand he's <laughs> up at uh, Seven Springs. Well, yeah, maybe then, maybe then. But anyhow, so I, I really just wanted to say thank you, Mr. Arasinko, for You're putting the time welcome. in it and representing our town so well. Um, I also, of course, want to give uh, condolences to the Ramsey family. Um, it's a, we all know how, what a hard thing that is and how much the, Mr. Ramsey has given to our community as well as his son. And, uh, you know, of course, big condolences. And... Major congrats to our finance department completely and to uh, Josie. Thank you for keeping us in line, keeping our numbers straight. So um, I wish my husband happy Thanksgiving tonight. Thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving. Yeah, she's I mean, ahead of the I mean, ahead of the yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Happy earlier. all holidays. Yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay, that's it. I, 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 I forgot. I, I forgot happy I'm New sorry. Year. I, was, I got injections today, so I'm not myself. Happy New Year. So. <laughs> it is, actually, oh, you're is not going to uh, let that one die. <laughs> right. oh. I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion that I can leave now. <laughs> you want to sneak out or yeah, I do. I'm going to crawl down the hallway out the door. Thank you. Very good. Um, and it is actually Chinese New Year they're celebrating right now. Oh, so happy New Year to you. There you go. Uh, that would have been better. You helped her a lot there, man. Help, yeah, happy New Year to those celebrating that in our community. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Mr. Arsenko, on your position, and we look forward to... Uh, for you representing Monroeville at that at that level? I will have lots of uh, reports in the future coming up real quick. <laughs> Very good. Positive good. stuff for us. Today. Good. We Look can't wait. To it. Come on. Uh, congratulations again to Josie and her staff for their award from the Government Finance Officers Association. That's excellent, that excellent work. And uh, I just want to thank our uh, intergovernmental committee. Uh, we met uh, with Gateway a couple nights ago. Uh, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Arsenko, Mr. Harvey. Uh, Mr. Little was there as well with Gateway representatives and Pitcairn representatives. It was a very, uh, very good meeting, um, and it's what uh, you know cooperation meetings. Uh, it's how it should be, and uh, we really look forward to fostering that relationship between the school district and Pitcairn, and, and uh, looking forward to other meetings in that magnitude. And uh, lastly, once again, uh, condolences to the Ramsey family. And with that, I will seek a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> so you have to